If you know anything about me, you know I enjoy collecting scotch whiskey and gray shirts. So I'm always happy to see another Christian citing verses showing it's okay for Christians to drink alcohol, just not in excess. Jesus turned the water into wine. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. A little wine for thy stomach's sake. Well said, brother. Cheers. These are some of the verses that people try to use to justify alcohol consumption. Wait, are you gonna... No! You literally just quoted verses showing it's okay, just not to do it excessively. Alright, let's see you try to get out of this one. But what people fail to realize is that the word wine in the Bible is used interchangeably to describe both alcohol and non-alcoholic beverages. <laughs> no, it does not, because non-alcoholic wine did not exist. They did not have any modern technology that would have prevented the natural yeast from turning the sugars into alcohol. By the time the grapes would have been picked, crushed, and turned into wine, and transferred to a wedding in Cana or a Passover celebration, the natural yeast on the warm climate would have turned it into alcoholic wine. Also, why would Paul prescribe grape juice to help with Timothy's stomach in 1 Timothy 5.23? The Jews and the Greeks use fermented wine for medicinal purposes, not fresh grape juice. For example, Isaiah 65 verse 8 talks about the new wine that is found in the cluster of a grape, referring to juice. Yeah, this seems to be ignoring the context. The passage is talking about how God is going to do great things with Israel. Just like someone can take the juice from a cluster of grapes and turn it into wine. There is a blessing in it that will come forth similar to what God is going to do with Israel. The Bible also clearly condemns the consumption of alcohol in large or small doses. For example, in Proverbs 23, verse 31, the Bible says, Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright, referring to the fermentation process. You cannot take this literally, because by your own logic, it would be sinful to even look at wine, which is absurd. Proverbs often uses metaphorical language for its wisdom teachings. If you read the surrounding context, this is clearly talking about someone who excessively drinks and likes to party too much. This is also made clear in the Septuagint reading. Milton Horne says in his commentary on Proverbs, the list of questions in verse 29 attempts to capture the life of one who is frequently drunk, woe, sorrow, strife, complaining, unexplainable wounds, and redness of eyes. The poet has elevated the topic of alcohol addiction to a level of metaphorical consideration by using similes of the serpent's bite and adder's sting. In other words, you're reading too much into the metaphors. Do you really think wine bites literally like a serpent? I'm running low, so I gotta top myself off. So anyway, as this guy clearly pointed out in the beginning of his video, alcohol consumption is fine, just not in excess. This is all I'm having tonight. Maybe tomorrow I'll have some scotch. Two days later. Hey, didn't Jesus drink alcohol? No. Yes, he probably did. Hey everybody, the party pooper anti-alcohol pastor is back to try and ruin fun. I'll drink to that. But it's very likely he's wrong when he says Jesus didn't drink alcohol. For example, Luke 7 says, For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he is a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard. Jesus is contrasting John the Baptist, who didn't drink any alcohol, with himself who does drink, and he's being accused of being a drunkard. Because of the contrast, the implication is, is that Jesus did drink alcohol, and when he did, they still attacked him. In Matthew 26 and Mark 14, Jesus is celebrating the Passover, and it's strongly implied he definitely did drink the alcohol that was present there. Since he says, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Wine in the Bible is used interchangeably to describe both alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. To deny that would be to be ignorant of the Bible. The verses you give... Do not show this, and this is just to be ignorant of science. The time it would take for the grapes to be picked, crushed, turned into juice, put into jars, put on the back of a cart, and transferred to Jerusalem being pulled by donkeys, taken to the market, sold, then waited for the Passover meal. The natural yeast would have turned the sugars into alcohol. Since Song of Solomon chapter 8 verse 2 states, I would cause thee to drink of spiced wine of the juice of my pomegranates. Oh honey. Oh, you sweet, sweet, innocent man. Oh, God, how do I explain this? You see, when a man and a woman love each other very much, sometimes they use metaphors to describe things they do alone in the bedroom. Notice she says the juice of her pomegranate. What she's saying is, I think you can fill in the details at this point. I, I hope. This is not her literally saying she's going to give him juice from a pomegranate, which was also thought of as wine. This is describing fun nighttime bedroom acts between married couples. Again, you're reading way too much into the metaphors. Wine in the Bible is always alcoholic. 
Advocates of drinking alcohol will often say it's okay to drink, just not to become drunk. Because when you become drunk, then you're sinning. Well, based upon that standard, they're stating that Jesus Christ was causing men to sin since he put out the new wine after men had well drunk. This is referring to the wedding in Cana when Jesus turned water into wine. And you're reading way too much into this. We don't know how much wine they had before they ran out. If we don't know how many people were there, the wine would have been distributed among if I were to have three beers over the course of two hours, I would be buzzed but not drunk. And you cannot blame Jesus if they were not morally responsible. Just like God provides and allows us to drink alcohol now, but it's not his fault if we're not responsible with it. God provides food for us, but he's not morally responsible if we partake in gluttony. Also, the word here used in John always refers to the drinking of alcohol or being intoxicated. Jesus did not turn water into grape juice. So once again, Christians, alcohol is not sinful. 